Uh, yeah, and the only the only reason the only reason I even brought this up is because uh, uh somebody in the community said, um, "Are you guys doing it on the third and the 10th? And I was like, "Well, yeah, no, the first will be the first Tuesday, yeah, so we're right. we not even. No one, look how flexible this committee committee is. <laughs> but, but, we, is. but we are always the second Tuesday, so far. So which far, is the so tenth. Far, yeah. Which so I don't, know, right, so about it. I don't is, know because it looks like they're probably still updating." We're all hey, Gary. Up. Hello, everybody. Sorry to, I didn't make it in person. I'm just getting over a cold, and I did not want to risk getting anybody sick in there. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I was I'm over an abundance of caution here. That's smart. I, like I did that. not go to my office today, and I certainly did not want to be in that small room with all you guys. And, <laughs> and it is a small room. Uh, yeah. we have a here. Um, and hi, Dan. Yeah. Hi, how you doing, Ryan? I'm well. Wow. Excuse me, is this Zoom being recorded? It's being recorded. Yes. Minutes. Perfect. All right, you're doing the minutes? All right. Okay, so um, I believe we have everybody here at 6.08. Um, I'd like to call the, the, uh, the um, uh, December uh, Traffic uh, Commission meeting uh, to order. Uh, second. I second. All right. So um, we'll go ahead and open this. Um, and, and before we go into new business, I would like to acknowledge um, a few uh, uh, changes, enhancements, if you will, to our, our uh, esteemed committee. Um, we have uh, several new, new members that I'm very uh, excited about. Um, we have uh, a, a, the most significant change for us is our trustee, uh, Wu Young, is transitioned off our com committee. And um, Lilani is our read is transitioning on to the committee. Um, so welcome. Thank you. Do you have any words of wisdom for us at this early stage of your trusteeship? <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you for having me here. And I'm just going to enjoy working with you guys. Hopefully we can welcome. make our village better. Great. Ab absolutely. Uh, I think it's, it'll be exciting. Um, and then we have uh, two other new members. Um, we have uh, um, Richard uh, Clifford. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, David Brown. So that's right. exciting to, to yeah. have both of you uh, join us for your first uh, meeting. <coughs> and, um, you know, I think having uh, new voices at the table is always, always important. And we're looking forward to, to working with you, you all. Um, are there any other things that we want? I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, so Ryan is planning to uh, convert a Word document to an Excel document. So my question, have you done that yet? If not, mm -hmm. I'd I, like, do you have copies to hand out? So, so it's on, so I have it. It looks very much like the, like what you have right now. Um, so when I converted it, um, the, there are some, there are some merge issues that I need to go in there and fix. So for tonight, can I? For tonight, that is excellent. Let it, let's go, that's an excellent idea. Um, so, and so what we're actually passing around is, um, is going to, uh, Robert and, Thank you. and I believe some others contributed a lot of ideas, but I think you did the, the layout. Laura, did you play, you played some role in, in this as well, I thought. Uh, yes, I actually had converted it to Excel at one point and then we converted it back. <laughs> but it, it works either way. I printed out some of it. It wouldn't print all the way for me today. Oh, yeah. But we did, Thanks. you know, I had suggested that we incorporate where it goes to. Yeah. And that would fall on Dan, like the resolution number when it hits the board of trustees and, and when it actually becomes live and viable right. instead of it getting lost from us to a work session to the abyss. Yeah, that that fee, you know closing closing that loop, Dan, is going to be important for us. Um, I know you know we we monitor it uh, as it goes to in the committee, and I know our trustee will be able to help with that. Lani, that's you know it's you, you're you're the one that usually keeps us in the, in the know when, when things are discussed. Um, but there's things that happen that sometimes we really just don't know about. Uh, we don't know if the decision's been made, and so we really want to be able to close that loop. Um, especially when we're talking to people in the community and they ask us, like, is there a status update or, hey, thank you so much for putting in that stop sign. And I'm like, 
Oh, it got done. Excellent. Thank, thank you for letting me know. So just kind of closing that loop is important. Um, so if we can figure out a way how we can get this you know, in a SharePoint, I think it's, this is added transparency for the village. This is everything that is discussed uh, here and going back, um, how, how long, uh, Rob? Um, it's everything from 2022 and right. goes back uh, so to some parts in 2021. Great. I and mean, this, this is, to me, this is real transparency. It can keep us on, on track. Um, we know what's happening. It has a date on there. Uh, and we just need to know where this can live, Dan, uh, because I don't think it's fair that it just lives in somebody's hard hard drive. It'd be great to have this if uh, the village can have it in the cloud or if we can have it on SharePoint or something um, uh, so we can use it as a tool. Yeah, I, th I think we're able to uh, uh, create a SharePoint file with the access privileges that the boards have through our uh, uh, Outlook licenses. Is that correct, uh, Audie? Yeah, but does he want to use SharePoint or do you actually want to publish it so residents can see at what stage their projects are? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, the, fir the first step would be getting this to where we all can collaborate on it. Um, once we have it in a SharePoint, I think it would be very easy to spin off um, uh, pieces of this to where it can be shared uh, with, with everyone. I think we we as a committee need to kind of take it for a test drive and see how we're going to interact with it. Um, and you know, just for example, we we went in there the other day and just just kind of looked at some of these things. And and you know, it's so there's so much information in here for all of us. This will keep us all on track. So the first step, let's get it on SharePoint so this committee can use it, and then we can take the next step where we can um, use it uh, with the community. Who's so, going to say that these documents so could effectuate that? Um, did you make any updates, Rob? Yes, it's updated as of today. Okay, do you, would you mind just re, re, re sharing, resending me the updated soft copy sure. of it, and oh. then I'll, I'll put it into Excel again. And um, I think this time I'll import it differently to Excel because I had a lot of merge errors. Yeah, here and there. changes. Yeah, so, okay. so I'm just gonna, I, I, can I tell you one? Yes, because this is something that Leilani is participated in. So the village was uh, deciding on whether to reduce the uh, um, speed limit in the village on, on local streets at 25, and you did that on Monday. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, Leilani's first opportunity to actually vote on a uh, law. That's the, the um, 25 right? limit here. So thank you. Oh. <laughs> so, so at that point, that's where we would have to institute a column, a resolution number, and then it was voted yes. and. Right. And then what happened would be no. I'm just saying for for the this for the this, management of it for the yeah. management of it. So one of us could always plug it in as a shared drive. But when it's actually really clean and we have it really running at top speed, you would be able to share it with the community as viewable, not for you know. Yeah, I much. agree. I think, but it becomes very easy for us to spin off like summaries, right? right. Like if we just have some sortable columns in yeah, there. Yeah, like one column, yeah, like and we'll you know, the resolution number, the date of the yep. bill you know, that it went through and, and there. And then there could be items in there that you don't have to make public. You could fold it, well, you know, you could hide a column. Yeah. So you're trying to create a SharePoint for every single person in this village to be able to put information. No, just for us no. for right now. Okay, just for us. But eventually, no, for eventually, no, eventually we'll, I, be able to is, is so, we'll be able to spin off like very quickly. We'll be able to sort information and say like, these are some of the things that we worked on the last, uh, say, two months, okay. right? As opposed to saying, go back in and read our minutes, like just so we have a snapshot of maybe some things that we've done. So we have a list of accomplishments, uh, things that we, you know, and, and it'll help you to stay really organized. So you don't have to go back in and always look back at minutes and where we are. You Got can it. simply grab this stuff right. and, and talk about it in a, in a trusty system. Yeah. And also if something's not working, right. if something's not being enforced, if something is has falling through the cracks, right. you we, we have a point of reference. Got it. And prior to this, there wasn't any. I, I would add to that, often we approve something and e even the board votes on something and it doesn't get done. So those are the kind of things that we're trying to track okay. that need to get actually done. Okay. Progress. So if it was, if I'm just giving an example, the new law that was passed in terms of the speed limit, now we're tracking when it's going to actually the signs go up and then you guys could add to the to the drive. Um, but we're not going to track that. 
That's that's not our job. But that's almost that's, similar that's, to that's, what that's, you're that's saying. What, that's beyond what we're responsible for. No, I know that. But what you're saying is, is that if something was if something was said in a meeting, then it was passed by the board, and then it was never um, implemented. Implemented. So we'd be able to go back and yeah. say, so I was just it, giving an example. It, it, the, <laughs> it is the board on the state, and it was passed unanimously. And at that point, if nothing happens, we could say this is when. Thank you. It became live. Got it. Caught up. Yeah, and and it is there. I mean, there's this is a lot of stuff. And and um, Gary are, and Dan, are you agreeing with this as as a really uh, savvy way for us to stay on track? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's it's just a column. It would be a couple of columns. What the request is, when the the date that the commission made a recommendation one way or the other, uh, what the recommendation was. Just, when it went to the board, when the board made a decision, uh, you know, when the uh, work order was issued, and uh, you know, I'm not always going to know when the sign gets put up because that's uh, uh, that's a public works item, and I don't know if, uh, if they're going to have time to track a spreadsheet, but I can always follow up with them. Okay, Gary, yeah, you... final, yeah, I'm fine with that too. Final resolution, whatever we call it, and we close it out. Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so my, 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 if, if I can have the last word on it, I just want to really thank Rob for, for, uh, putting all this together. It was a, it was a lot of, it was a lot of work. Um, this is like huge. This is, this will be our, our really, our plan, help us plan going forward. So thanks for doing that. All right. Uh, so can we, um, jump into new, new business? We have our, um, our, uh, neighbors, uh, from, uh, Stewart Avenue, uh, Frank, uh, Kalana, Colantonio. Colantonio. Uh, so Frank, uh, can you um, uh, maybe uh, share a little bit what's happening on, on Stewart Avenue uh, about the restoration of the parking over there? And May I start? Yes. So my wife wrote a, little, wrote a letter to the board. Uh, with the mobile gas bill, there were condensing trucks on the street, two sheds, and they removed parking on that street during the remediation. The remediation has finished 20 years ago. And we're asking if the board can please consider restoring parking to the south side of Stewart Avenue. We have multifamily homes on the street and obviously the parking, the parking spots are two cars. The multifamily homes, there's no parking on that street. So respectfully to consider parking on the street. Okay, thanks. Um... Any, would you like to add any other questions? Yes. Yeah, it, it would be a big help. Uh, you know, I've been in that neighborhood basically since 1977 in one, in one house or another. And there used to be parking there. And it was, you know, the driveways aren't that big and you could put like two or three cars, but usually there's like, you know, five or six people living in the house. And if somebody comes over, if you have a barbecue or you want to unload something, you know, there's always, it, you're, you're always thinking, you know, you're going to get a ticket and you think back to where there was parking on the street where it made it a lot more convenient, you know, it made it a lot more friendly. Right. It was a little, it was a little easier um, a few years back. Yeah. And so, so Con Edison removed sheds and never restored to parking. Is that? Well, it's not their responsibility to restore parking. It's the traffic commission's responsibility to restore parking. They completed their test 20 years ago. And this has just been an open point. Um, the, other, the other thing too, I, I mentioned to the traffic commission is I have a hardship. I'm taking care of my 86 year old dad. He needs a physical therapist and a nurse at the house. The therapist and the nurse do not like to come to my house because they're issued tickets. <clears throat> my neighbors are condos on the corner are nice enough to remind the police officers physical therapy is every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock. So it becomes a very, it's very tough for me to get people to care for my father. Okay. Um, and, and so with, with that, with that in mind, uh, is this, is this the first time that it's been brought uh, back to the commission? This, been, to my knowledge, yeah. the first time it's been brought back. To the yeah. Uh, Brian, when, when, um, uh, Augie first asked me about this, I said, well, take a look at the traffic commission minutes from way back when. And I imagine what he did was he, uh, used our, uh, our, our document storage system which is a program called Laserfiche, and he probably did a search for the word Stewart, found all the traffic commission meetings that uh, dealt with it, 
and then uh, you know when we saw when it was first uh, uh, the restriction was first established. You know, I think what happens is once uh, something gets established, people get used to it, and you know it, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. But um, as far as the process, is that accurate? Uh, that way, the way you found the information. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. And it's at Stuart. It's at Stuart and what exactly? It's just. I think it's, it's with the kind of not the dead end of Stuart, but it's Stuart east of North Barry and Glen Drive, uh, west of South Barry, right? Okay. Short side. Can we get that on Google Maps? I took a, it's like, I went there last night. I had a lot of trouble finding it exactly. Yeah. Let me. Let me. Let me. Uh, Sorry, right. right. that for you. Maps were just, I had the map, but the map was just confusing. All right, fine. We're just going to reference the map. Yeah, let, let me uh, let me get that for you. Yeah, that'll be better. And it is still narrow, right? Because there's 28 feet. There's no parking on the north side, or is it? Yeah. yeah. There's no driveways on the north side. Oh, I think um, it, it may, even if it's narrow, I think the there was a specific issue why the parking restriction was established in the first place and that issue has long since been obviated um but uh let me uh yeah i noticed in the note to the uh trustees in 2000 <laughs> it was specific to during the mobile gas village remediation process but that wasn't carried through to the actual resolution Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, you, you typically don't uh, prepare a a parking restriction with a uh, kind of like an automatic rescind uh, rescindment or rescindal, whatever the proper That's word is. Uh, but if if you see uh, here we are at Stewart at uh, uh, so Guy and Montero, so I think it's this section of the of Stewart. Is that correct, Augie? Uh, Yes. Yep. Oh, what a beautiful house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I know you don't have eyes in the back of your head, despite your excellent uh, accounting skills. Uh, so, I mean, you can see the, so here's no parking anytime. Um, uh, I'm not a fan of the word dangerous on any sign, but. Uh, well, and so Dan, I mean, um, just to think this through a little, I mean, it's, it's one of our typical um, older streets in the Maranac that's narrow. Um, I would love to know what, um, I mean, and nobody's, nobody's uh, su suggested. Maybe it was the lady who. Did you guys order any food? No, no. maybe it was the. It might be for someone in the regard. Yeah. So yeah, if the lady was working in the, the, lady, the cleanup. Yeah, she's the a cleanup cleaner. lady. Oh, oh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, the kind of traffic it's going to carry, it, it's going to be somewhat limited in that it's it's either going to be people who live on this short stretch of Stewart or people who are going to Lawn Terrace. So I I, I don't think you're going to. Uh, it's not it's not carrying a tremendous. It's not really carrying through traffic. No one is going on this section of Stewart to get somewhere else. Okay, that's important. I mean, uh, and would we would is there is there a proposal to restore all parking or like six segments of parking? I mean, that's that's a pretty big curve right there. And it, you know what we have seen where you have parking on these curves is some some reason. I know cars were big back in the '70s, but everyone drives giant trucks now, and you can't see around. So a lot of times when these cars are on the curve, it creates a whole other set of problems. And we have more people walking than ever before in our community, right? So I also, there's not sidewalks over here. So yeah, it means that people are really having to share the road. So is there a way to, is there a way, Dan, to think about this where we, where we restore some parking, but maybe not on that actual angle? The bend? Um, yeah, I mean, you can certainly, uh, uh, I think it's something similar that we did on Sunnyside uh, at the, uh, a couple of meetings ago. If you recall, um, the uh, the commission recommended to uh, remove, I think it was two or three parking spaces at uh, the curve 
in the roadway that's about uh, I think maybe a couple hundred feet down the road. So that that's what we wrote up. So we can certainly look at that. I mean, like I said, I, I, it seems like your your biggest issue. Uh, Is going to be kind of maybe right here, uh, and you know it may not be the worst thing in the world, um, like right over maybe to restrict parking on across the driveway, just so uh, you know at least I don't I can't recall which one's your house, Augie, but um, I I know that uh, maybe backing out might be a bit difficult if there was a car parked right there. Um, but there's no parking on that side there. Okay. Well, there's no parking on either side. So right. you can certainly keep it restricted to one side. Uh, that, would, that would certainly be an option. I think that may have, um, I have, I can't recall what the, uh, if the restriction that was established, I'm thinking it was in the what late 80s, early 90s, whether it was, uh, Extending the no parking to both sides if there was already an existing uh, we restriction. on the north side, and it was extended to the south side. Okay, so there was no okay, so uh, then okay, so then there was always parking allowed on this side then, because this would be the south side. My side of the street is the south side. Then your mouse is going all over the screen. Well, no, yeah, I think uh, yeah, this, this is this is South Barry going north, so. Right. This this is the north side. This is the south side. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So the the proposal is to restore parking on the south side. Okay. Is that is that keeping a no parking on on the north side? You. Frank. Um, yeah, I guess I guess this. Um, I don't remember exactly how it was, but I remember. You know, people parking on the uh, on the south side, maybe. right? Like in front of the houses, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we're not talking about on that. So okay. So keeping no parking on the north side and instituting a no parking on the south side. No, 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 the reverse. I think it was keeping the no parking on the north side and allowing it on the south side. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Now, can the fire trucks get by in case of an emergency? I, I would. I, I, you know, so fire. you know, like my, my I, I don't know if. Uh, uh, Mr. LaRocco is there, or he's on uh, on the meeting, but um, I, I think if there's parking just on one side, uh, a fire truck should be able to get through. I think uh, those trucks are about uh, 12 foot wide, Og, if that. I mean, if I'm driving the truck, we'll get into it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't want to say that, Augie, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I have always felt that if, if, if the fire department needs to get somewhere, they, they will get there. So how about on the corners? Do you want to keep no parking on on the corners so you're able to make the turn to get into your street without so, having a car parked from corner to corner? So if you're looking at the corner on the south side, I believe there's a stop sign there. And you can't park within 15 feet of a stop sign. Is it 15 or 30? I can't recall. But 30. Uh, yeah, I mean, at the very least, um, you know, no car is going to be able to park at least up until the edge of this driveway. So um, functionally, you, you really wouldn't even need to put a sign up there because I, if someone wants to park in front of a driveway, I'd, you know, more power That's to you. That's the north side, Dad. What? That's the north side you're parking at. That, this is the south side. Mm -hmm. That's the south side? Yeah, it is the south side. Because the, the sound is this way. Here's South Barry Avenue going south. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, Augie, I, I promise you with 100 million percent metaphysical certitude, this is the south side of the roadway. What do you think, Laura? Have I, have I ever steered you wrong, Aug? No, they need the parking back. I mean, I've, I've been with the street they 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 need the parking but i'm concerned I, i'm just concerned with somebody trying to sh shove their way in right in front of somebody's driveway and have nose out in their driveway i mean the, the one you know one thing that i can tell though is um no one's going to park 
between these two driveways. Yeah. Um, what you see with them, um, uh, these two driveways here, I think these are double driveways. So uh, there's a lot of room within the driveway to start your turning movements. So they're not going to need to back up as far into the roadway as it were they would if it was a, a single lane driveway. Uh, and same thing. So yeah, this these two driveways are across from each other. So it, it, the, the, the two driveways that would be most impacted are, are extra wide. So I, I don't know if that's going to be much of an issue. Right. I think most of the driveways are on the north side. Yes. So parking should be restored on the north side then. Uh, there are no driveways on the left hand yeah, side. Uh, so the, the okay. Dan, real, real quick, Dan, hang on a second. I, 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 uh, Frank, uh, uh, one of the residents here, wants to say something. Good. Yeah, um, well, actually, Augie, okay, I was confused between like uh, what's being called the north and the south. Yeah, I was confused too. I don't so, know exactly. so basically, basically, our side is considered the north side. The north side. Yeah. We're looking for the north side to put parking on the north side because over here there's no there's no driveways nobody's going to have issues backing up right. we will have issues backing up if there's parking on this side across so we so the, the the proposal is restoring parking on the north side yes okay so in terms of the the number of vehicles that would be able to park on the north side so um, you probably get you know maybe two vehicles here um Maybe one here, uh, and you know, kind of maybe one or two here. So you you would that's all we're looking. That be helpful. Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely. yeah. yeah. That's all we're looking because right now they have none. All right. Is there a motion from a member of the commission? I'm confused with the side of the road that I'm on. <laughs> so just think of it. Just think of it this way. I'm just looking at this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, Laura, this is, uh, you know, this is South Ferry as it approaches Post Road. So on the other side becomes north. So you're heading, you're heading north this way. So that would make this the north side of the street. Understood. So we are, we are trying to make a motion or we are requesting to make a motion to reinst reinstate parking on the north side of the street as requested by the residents. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Is it all along um, Stewart Avenue from South Barry to Eon, or is it just a short stretch? No, well, so, I mean, this is kind of a short stretch, uh, Robert. You can define um, where that is. So here's here's uh, South Barry Avenue. So we'll just take a quick quick drive. Well, can I interject? Can Mr. Clifford had an idea. Can I get provided the traffic commission so nobody gets car. sick? <laughs> yeah. yeah, a simpler solution. Mr. Clifford had a simpler solution to do it by numerical order so we know exactly where housing, housing, numbers. housing numbers. Good idea. Housing on one side is odd number, even on the other side. Just that way. Even on um, 640. Was it the is that the side you want the parking on? Yeah. Yeah. Amend your motion. You know your proposal. Well, um, Mr. Clifford, the um, uh, the way that the regulations are uh, codified is it says the parking is restricted on this side of the street uh, between A and B, or from a point A to a point B. So it, the the actual regulation has to. Uh, by the yeah. side of the street. But to avoid confusion and nausea, okay, we could say also, you know, referred to as the even you know, side. The, the even side. So that way, people are, you know, you have the regulation identifying it, and then you have the common knowledge of so that the pedestrian <laughs> is going to say the even side has the pardon, not the odd side. But Which, I which we're, are you talking about on, on on signs that we would have on the road? We're trying to follow the pointer, and people are yeah. having difficulty following. The I pointer. think he's talking about the resolution, then. Yeah. Yeah. 
we're ready to make a resolution. Um, is, is there a resolution, I think, including uh, for a Yeah, uh, sorry, a motion. Yes. Uh, somebody is willing to make a motion for a parking uh, on Stewart Avenue between Vion um, and South Berry on the north side, also known as the even numbered house side. Um, is anyone willing to do this? I make that motion. I second <laughs> that motion. Whatever he says. Whatever you say. I right. second that motion. <laughs> All right. All right, so I, I'll I, I'm gonna, I'll I'll make the motion then. So we're we're making a motion to um, uh, reestablish um, uh, street parking on Stewart Avenue between Guion Drive and South Ferry on the even on the north side slash even numbered side of the street. Um, as soon as possible. Um, is there a second? Laura seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Just a question, one more question. Sorry. Consistent with all other traffic regulations so that you don't have someone jumping that short spot between the end of the driveway and the stop sign. So, that, you know, no one's going to say, well, it doesn't say no parking here. Um, we typically, we really don't do that because you have stop signs all over the village. For us to put a, a sign uh, next to every, to identify that 30 foot buffer between a stop sign and where you can really park, I, we would have, you know, probably it's just hundreds, for hundreds of signs. So, you, you, so you're not saying, you're not giving, having a resolution saying we're putting parking in on the north side and some of you said parking's restored here. That seems to override. Well, per, well in line with all other uh, with all that's other. That's all I was uh, asking. Law. Yeah, that the the um that that stop sign uh, parking restriction is part of the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law. So that it the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law complements whatever uh, regulations that are promulgated at the local level. So. Uh, yeah, you know, it's like uh, if you're driving on a state highway, you know, and there's no uh, 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 speed limit sign for an extended amount of time, it, it defaults to 55 miles per hour. Um, uh, you know, you, uh, you know, you don't have to have like a uh, a sign that explains what a yield what yield means. Um, it's yeah, I so say we really work. I mean, it, it, that, there's just not the sign that's entirely necessary because it's already in the state law. I mean, I know that uh, most of us were, uh, took our, our permit test many, many, many years ago in my case. Uh, and we're supposed to kind of learn this stuff then, but uh, you know, we, we, we just, we really don't need to add that level of specificity. Well, you know, to, or, to, to piggyback off that, I think that somehow or another we have to reculture and enforce because if you travel through our village you can go to numerous stop signs throughout and find cars parked directly on top or if that passed a stop sign so us as a committee and us as a village probably need to think of how we're going to marry what is state mandated law and village and county law along with our village and Memorial Police Department to ensure that we're enforcing this because by not enforcing it, we're setting, setting the stage for allowance. And by not marking out those areas that there are no parking, maybe not putting signage and signage pollution, but painting you know, no, no. no parking lines in those areas so you can start to reculture our community that they can't be there because our job is safety. And Understood, but I mean, if you're asking, if you're asking the village to mark out or hatch out every single stop sign in the village and maintain that on an annual basis, I, I don't think we have the resources for that. No, but if we start out maybe on a on a first step on a street where we're recreating parking and we zone that out and we give a sort of a map as and sort of flag it to the to the residents to show them that they can't park there, we'd be killing two birds with one stone. 
I'm not saying we have to do this everywhere, but we can begin to start to avoid an issue that, that is going to occur. And if we're gonna reinstitute parking, maybe we should try something a little different to avoid any issue that could come down the road. Just a thought. Just a yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, I, I don't want um, to. Yeah, I, I just think, no, I mean, I what what's being said makes all the sense in the, in the world that we want to, you know, do things correctly. If, if, if you want to do that, put that in your resolution and we'll bring it to the board. Okay. I also, I also worried, uh, uh, you know, what, not worried. I, I guess I'm concerned that in our pursuit of improved outcomes, we also are going to ensure that uh, Frank's family is not going to have parking by Christmas. Well, so just, just to, as far as the schedule, the next meeting. Oh, so, but you know, as far as the schedule, the next meeting of the village board is January 9th. Right. Uh, it would go on that work session. It would uh, go for action on January 23rd. Uh, once it's approved by the board, uh, we create a work order, send it to DPW. Uh, and even after that, they have to uh, call for a code 753, which is the utility markout. And that can take uh, you know several days. Uh, if there are weather issues, that could, you know, make it a little trickier, especially in the winter. Uh, you know, even if my, my guess is if everything turned out perfect, um, we could probably have the signs by uh, um, early to mid-February. <laughs> again, that's just the, just the time part. So, but I think, I think what Laura, Laura and, and uh, our, our new member, uh, Richard, are saying, or matter because we, we don't want to continue replicating things um, that have caused us issues in the past. And if we have a chance to have people when we open up parking to just remind folks that they this is yelled out between the stop sign and and you know 15 feet away, 30 feet away. Whatever. Well the, the other thing is we, we we couldn't even really paint anything until probably uh, realistically March at the earliest because you can't paint during the colder winter months. Yeah. Just a proposal. I have a question for we go back to the resolution <coughs> or motion. It's called a motion. Yeah, this is a motion. Yeah. So in 2000, the parking on the south side was mixed. We're now proposing to establish parking on the north side. So I want to make sure that that's what we need to do. It's a very narrow street. That, that's what's being, yeah, being okay. proposed. So originally parking existed on the south side forever, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And then when there, the project was done, they removed it. And then everyone realized that that was maybe a good idea because the street was narrow. But the residents are now suggesting that there's not enough parking for when home health attendants or therapists come to take care of uh, elderly residents or man, bar barbecues or whatever, right? So it's just not, it's maybe no longer pra practical. Right. I, I, I just want to make clear, like, we're not reestablishing. We're establishing for the first time. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, I don't know what the street looked like in 2000, and uh, Frank may know better. Um, but um, you know, it seems there are more driveways on the north side, so there's probably able to get more car. They probably had more available parking on the south side uh, back when. So do we? Do, do does anyone feel like we need to reassess? The um, to include the painting. Yes. So uh, the motion. Um, uh, I, I move that we uh, establish um, parking on the north side of Stewart Avenue, also known as the even side of Stewart Avenue, between uh, Guillen and South uh, Ferry. And uh, it will include um, markers, Dan. Uh, Are you wait, if you want to, you know, request that the village consider uh, adding uh, pavement markings, you can make that part of your resolution. With with appropriate pavement markings. <laughs> 
Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you all for coming. Uh, for coming in, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your support. And, uh, yeah. All right, we're going to be um, moving on to the, the next. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll come and visit. We'll come and visit. So glad we did. Have a great holiday. Have a great holiday. You too. Thank you. Have a great holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Did she say why she was here? She's one of the lawyers. She's one of the lawyers. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening. 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 Do, you, too late. do we have anybody uh, online from 650 Mamaroneck Avenue? Uh, let me that. check the Zoom. Uh, I think that was, is that, was that, was that Mr. Marconi? Uh, we have um, uh, Mr. Keller and uh, Trustee Young. So I, I don't know if, uh, if there, uh, I don't know if Mr. Keller is here at about six fifty. Speak about, about six fifty. He can raise his hand, which he just did. Uh, like we do allowed to uh, speak, yeah. oh. Mr. Keller. He's for six fifty. Uh, we can find out in a second. Let's let's let him. Great idea. Let's let him in. And let's let's go. We can go a lot of order on this one. All right. So, Mr. Keller, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm just, um, uh, we, again, I hadn't been able to attend any of the uh, previous meetings uh, working uh, with my work schedule. Um, myself and some of my neighbors uh, had written uh, several months ago regarding Knollwood Avenue and Crown Court regarding a potential of a speed bump. Um, a lot of young families in the area. Um, it's Harbor Heights. It's kind of a cut through a little bit and not, not so much our neighborhood, but with Norwood Avenue, uh, off of Mamaronic Avenue coming up the hill, uh, there's really no stop sign, uh, when they're coming off the highway, uh, cutting a hard left onto Raleigh. Uh, we had put a request in, in writing some of the neighbors. Um, and I think that it was going to some sort of, um, I guess there was going to be some sort of review or uh, traffic review by the police department. I'm not really sure, yeah. uh, but but I'm really just reaching out um, in regard to this to see what the status is and, and really what this potential review would involve. Sure. So uh, you know, looking looking at our at our notes and and uh, uh, Dan uh, and Rob and others, please jump in, but. Um, you know, we, we had, uh, going back to, to May of 21, um, there were some, some suggestions around this, some concern, uh, and then again on January of 2022, and then again of August of 2022, um, and at, at today, uh, we haven't recommended a solution, correct? Um, and the idea, uh, currently your, um, you're still on the official agenda, uh, Mr. Keller. Uh, you are um, in in the, the grouping of old business. Um, I don't want to get too out of order here, but at the same time, I want to be respectful of your time and 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 that you're present today. Ryan, may I ask where do you want this keep up? Because that's where I live. How are you? Yeah, I think at the the top of the uh, top of the hill at on on actually on Knollwood at the corner of Crown Court. So I, I don't have a diagram, but at, at the when at you come up the hill, you mean, or after you get up the hill? After you get up the hill. Oh, okay. Because I think it was brought to the commission to put a stop sign at the top of the hill, which I thought was a little well, dangerous. Well, I, I, th I think we'd be we'd be uh, open to any any suggestion that would slow it down because as you know when they come up the hill 
Yeah. They're kind of cutting the left on to, to Raleigh. And, and look, some of them are going a little fast. Some of them are continuing down Knollwood a little fast. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of young families, you know, specifically on that corner. Uh, and I know that they said there was going to be an assessment, but what is, has there been any, you know, work up on that assessment between the last uh, where, where it was going to, you know, is there, is been there, are there any developments as, has anything happened well with this? So th this was, you know, I, I mentioned 2021. Um, I think this was really uh, the, the last notes that I have are from October, and that's maybe when the term assessment came up. Um, Dan, can, can you, I mean, I, I, Mr. Kelly, you're asking the right question because we don't, we don't want to make a motion and recommend particular action without it being um, possible, feasible, prudent. We got, I mean, uh, we, we, well, and, and let me, and let me just add too. I think there was a mention that there was something, it was referenced to the uniform traffic code that there was, they, it, they had to, they were going to assess and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, that there had to be a certain amount of accidents or, you know, yeah, before yeah. there could be a consideration of something, you know, like a speed bump or, or potentially a stop sign or, or whatever would take to, to, um, slow the corner down. Yep. Um, again, you know, I, I just want to, again, the, the neighborhood is, is somewhat concerned. It, it is getting fast. And obviously with a lot of kids in the neighborhood, we, we don't want to wait for an accident to happen before we consider, you know, something that would be, you know, in the best interest of, of, of the, the neighborhood. So yeah, that's certainly well, that, that's certainly yeah, I, I can kind of go over the, uh, you know, the, what the warrants are, that's what we call them. Uh, the, you know, we try, we, we try to install signage in accordance with, with what is known as the manual of uniform traffic control devices. Uh, and the warrant for establishing an all way stop is that uh, there should be five or more accidents in a 12 month period. Uh, as far as speed, and what I've, I've mentioned to the traffic commission, uh, is that you know stop signs do not slow down traffic. Uh, what stop signs do is it may reduce speed in the uh, immediate vicinity of an intersection, but with uh, what winds up happening is um, people tend to uh, go faster after that stop sign to make up for perceived loss of time. Uh, and I think what I've mentioned is that the average uh, motorist is back up to speed within 150 feet of the sign. So, and yeah, you know, there are engineering studies for for decades that you know have looked at the ability of stop signs as speed control devices, and I think they've uniformly found that it's not a an appropriate use of of a stop sign. It's really to uh, delineate right of way at intersections that have uh, issues, whether it be accident issues or visual obstruction issues. Um, but I, I, I think we've looked at the data for the intersection, uh, and it was only a couple of accidents over a five-year period total. Dan, can I interrupt you for a second? I, I, that's where I live, so I kind of want to speak on behalf of George. Um, from my opinion, it's not just the intersection of Crown Court that he's talking about. It's that whole area because it's a very strange, you have one, two, three, four roads coming off of the one road. As you come up the hill, you have a road to the right, a road to the left, a road bearing right and a road bearing left. And it's very wide in that area. And I know I live on Raleigh. So when I come up the hill, I have to bear to the left and coming out of Knollwood, there's a stop sign and what I'm bearing to the left, sometimes the car starts going from their stop sign because it's it's just a very tricky intersection. So I wonder if you can have the engineer just take a look at that location to see if there's anything they suggest. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate your comments. I, I, I and I agree. I share your sentiments with it. It, it is tricky, and, I, and that's probably the most eloquent way to put it. I, that's why I think a speed bump at the top of the at the top of the hill on Crown Court maybe a speed bump on Torali would actually slow it down a little bit. So um, as, as far as uh, speed bumps, we, we've, uh, we did actually install 
some speed bumps uh, in the Washingtonville neighborhood. We yeah. have our specific guidelines for when you install them. Uh, I think they can't be within uh, 150 or 250 feet of an intersection. So th that's kind of one of the first things you have to take a look at is if, if we, if it's uh, something you want to look at, it's where it can actually be placed because they can't put it across from a drive or in the path of a driveway. It has to be a certain amount of way from an intersection as well. I, well, I, I can't recall what yeah. the exact numbers are, but I, I, I'm sure I can. Um, uh, well, yeah. I mean, the, but that's a, that's the issue, and and it, and I br bring back to the committee members' uh, comments on it's a tricky corner, and 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 really, what's frustrating for me is I, I don't feel like we're getting a, a solution to a problem. I think there's an acknowledgement from the committee member that it's a tricky corner, and and that there are potential problems. Look, the the neighborhood, the neighbors try to take care, but again, these you know sometimes. People are coming off the highway, they're coming off work, whatever the case may be, they're, they're going a little fast or, or whatever the case may be. You're not going to have the av the availability based on the design of the street, which is old from, from the 20s, right, where it's going to be 150 feet from this person, you know, 150 feet from this driveway, but it is fast. And and I, I, that's why we're, we're taking it to the committee for, for a solution. And I'm almost thinking, too, I don't, I don't know if there's enough room that's why like you or the engineer would know better. It, I'm almost thinking if there's a way to even put a small island in the middle. Yeah, the road, so you, road died. Yeah, so that it oh. narrows like you did on Fenimore so that the cars kind of have yeah. to slow down because on top of that, there's always cars coming up there and making U-turns. Yeah. Well, you, you know my my mantra about, uh, you know, kind of the, the best way to slow down right. drivers is make them perceive uh, the road is less safe than it is. Right. You know, by making someone less comfortable, they they will be more attentive. It's kind of a little, a little bit of re reverse psychology. There is a way maybe to do that. I yeah, think I mean, certainly. I, I think I tend to like like, like that approach because. Street. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. In, like this whole thing with the 25 mile per hour speed limit. Uh, you know, we had to look at every road and. Um, you know, our traffic engineer specifically said that a road like uh, Mamaroneck Avenue wasn't designed or is designed for to accommodate speed more than 30. There's not much you're going to do on there to uh, encourage people to go slower than 30 miles per hour because of the way the road's designed. Well, but it's it, it's it's part. And I was talking to another traffic engineer today, and I, you know, said that it's you know, you know traffic engineering is 50 percent engineering 50 percent psychology well, well let me ask you this in the meantime with with lieutenant gata there maybe perhaps could there be i i know on america every there's sometimes a speed sign uh you know could there be a placement of a speed sign maybe on on the right specifically on the raleigh turn uh just to kind of you know let the neighbors know like how fast they're coming around that corner how how fast they're coming up that hill off of Maranick Avenue. I, I certainly don't want to recommend summonsing of neighbors or anything like that. I think that that we want to try to, you know, just make people aware that hey, look, th there are a lot of children in the area. It's 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 a tricky corner, and to slow it down. Even if you park a police car there with nobody in it, I think that would help too. Or, or the speed apparatus. Can't can't we place mean. that speed apparatus there to clock their speed so we can see what's actually happening and and kind of mark it. Uh, well, I, th I think the neighbors would would take care to to slow down. Maybe I think it's just sometimes awareness. Uh, of course, but it's somewhere to start because I I live in the flats in Washingtonville, and I've been waiting for speed humps for years, and we're through we're a through traffic street that shouldn't be, and that is in desperate need of them. But to start somewhere, that's where we started. So, so my my suggestion would be that if we had our police department involved and we're measuring and we're tracking and getting data we could possibly move forward yeah i mean i i i'm not going to speak for the police department I, I know that um you know the there is great demand for the uh the the speed wagons the speed signs i don't know what the uh what the chief's schedule is for uh deployment of things i mean i think we tend to be pretty active around the schools 
So um, that, I mean, I, I don't want to I, I don't want to promise the police deploying something that if they're already uh, scheduled to do it somewhere else. Well, it, it it is also a location where there are school buses every morning and every afternoon. I I, I understand. I'm just I I, I I I don't I don't direct the police chief where to. Install but, all the stuff, to, so. to, to make a to you know to decide on an outcome without data is a pretty um it's tough to make. Uh, I, I, I think what you uh, I, what the uh, is, oh. yeah, real quick and. So I just I'm looking at the at the map, and one of the things that strikes me is the streets that we're talking about are about as neighborhoody of the streets as they come. Mm -hmm. These are not cut through streets, and so mm -hmm. I don't want to you misquote our esteemed neighbors. mayor, but um, he says, you know, we we have seen we have seen the the uh, the problem, and it's us. It I mean, it's yes, the neighbors that are speeding through this oh area. It's not it's not people from another part of the world or another town that are doing this i mean these are neighborhood streets right and so i think you know the road the road dieting on Fen fenimore um really has worked uh if i we i want to be i want to be respectful of everybody else on the agenda and um uh the fact that this is a complex issue so dan can we have can we have uh uh the end the engineer will be like take a gander at um, having some type of of island or uh, road dieting type thing uh, in place at, at the at the kind of that knoll the Knollwood uh, Crown Court area where it's pretty wide. Yeah, I, I I can do that. Um, I, I would just uh, if I don't want to uh, uh, sound dismissive, but I'm actually on vacation effective tomorrow. So uh, I'm not going to be back till the 27th. So if you can uh, uh, just follow up with an email, some of the stuff you're, you'd like me to follow up on, so sure. I can we'll do. follow up on that in the 27th. I'll send you an email uh, about having the engineer take a look at that, specifically on Knollwood and um, Crown Court, because it seems like they're, you know. I, and again, I don't know that area very well. I'm just, I'm really just looking at the streets on the map. <laughs> I'm happy, to, I'm happy to meet you there if you tell me when you'll be there, because I'm usually home in the morning. You got a volunteer, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Mr. Keller, thanks. Thank you. Right. I think um, on the front um, board has a question or and just one more suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, large intersection, maybe a traffic circle of some sort. Little traffic island, yeah. So that you just have to right. slow down to go around the island. It doesn't need to be massive. Yeah, it won't disrupt the neighborhood. But if you got to go around it. You can't go through it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're the, they're engineers. They they yeah. do this for a living. Yeah, I, I think just getting everyone to slow down a, a little, you know, a little right. bit will be Put good. something in their way. All right. Okay. Thank Mr. Keller. Um, Thanks for joining us uh, uh, this evening, and and thanks for keeping us on the on the front burner uh, for the commission. And we'll continue to pursue um, a simple solution to what seems to be a, com a complex problem. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. All right. Um, so on six, do we have anyone, Dan, from six fifty Marinac Ave? The uh, the only uh, attendee left is uh, Trustee Young, and I, I'm not sure if he's here to talk about 650 Mamaroneck Avenue or okay. Austin Avenue. We have a uh, um, um, uh, Rob. Uh, Rob's going to uh, share um, about 650 Mamaroneck Ave. Robert. All right. So this has to do with merchants at that area, basically from Old White Plains Road along mm -hmm. Mamaroneck Avenue up probably through to the high school, to, to the uh, MAS school. Their issue is that it's limited parking on the American Avenue. It's either 90 minute or two hour parking and cars tend to park there longer, often all day. And the merchant's issue is that clients who are cust potential customers pass them by because there's no place for them to park. And there's a lack of code enforcement for giving tickets so that there's no incentive for people uh, right. to, 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 to obey the limited parking. That's the basic issue. 
I actually spoke to Mr. Marconi. He gave me a call because he wasn't able to attend. He is um he has some issues. And he owns Tri-City. And he spoke with all the residents and he spoke with the merchants as well. And he they have agreed or would are requesting it to be brought down to 30 minute with enforcement. Because those stores that are along that corridor aren't stores that you're in for two or three hours you know, at a clip. It's, it's a run in and run out. And, and as you know, we have experiencing problems in collective. On both sides? Yes. Yes. I think it's 90 minutes. Well, it, it piecemeals, and that's the problem. It goes 30, 60, 90, what, you know, whatever the flavor of the month was, we changed it to suit whatever was needed instead of it being a collective number, 30 minutes flat. So there would be a rotation and movement of cars. But the problem that he's experiencing, and with the no parking that he was grateful that we've in, implemented now in front of Tri-City where we had pulled back, is that he's experiencing that there's no enforcement. So our parking enforcement aren't appearing as well on both sides of the street. But what the merchants are asking for is for 30 minute parking. And all the merchants said that? That's what Mr. Marconi said and he spoke for the merchants. He said he spoke with the merchants. How many stores are we talking about? Probably 11. The, the issue with a, a time limit that short is that it would be very difficult for a parking enforcement officer to be able to go back and forth across all those spaces every 30, 45 minutes. Um, you know, the, 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 the best tool I know to ensure turnover is parking meters. Uh, the, uh, you know, that's, uh, uh, I don't wanna, uh, I've been doing this for a long time and uh, when uh, you know, I've always felt, and there's, there's a there's a book called uh, Parking 101 by uh, uh, Dr. Shoup, and basically says when when you place no value on your parking, people will treat it as if it has no value. Um, that I think that is probably the the best method to ensure turnover. Um, I said, and I think we we've we've this has come up before because I think you've asked about 15 minute parking in front of a store like Sal's. And I, I said, it's just, it, it, it would be nearly impossible to enforce a parking limit that short. Um, and I said, I think uh, the, the parking meter is, is really the, the best way to. Well, it, I understand. in this email, he's saying the current is 90 minutes and he wanted, he was there, they're seeking an adjustment to perhaps 30 minutes. So if we could find a medium to somehow rectify and make it a cleaner situation and maybe bring it up to 60 minutes straight across the board with enforcement. I mean, we need to do something for them because they're experiencing issue. And is that from Grand Street going down? Yeah. That's a lot of effects. I know we, we you know oh. we, we did just do the um I think the meter uh, is a better idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean we're we're talking about Grand Grand Street now. We're not talking about all the way up by the school. No. So he's 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 asking in here, he said the current situation is totally unfair to the merchants in that area. In addition, we are not treated fairly as there is little or no enforcement or current parking regulations. When we call to complain, parking enforcement may not show up at all or a couple of times, then back to the same old enforcement. While this area is not part of the CBD, we are, are we are merchants, property owners, and renters who deserve the same enforcement as the CBD. We must be included and enforced on a daily basis. Thank you for consideration. Vincent Marconi, owner of Tri-City. And when he called, he called to express that he had pulled all state, that whole strip, the laundromat on the other side, through the variety store, through the bakery, in that area up to what was Maple and Rose. So can we, can we, uh, what kind of uh, assessment do we need to do um, to consider if meters are, are, the, are the way to go? I, I don't know what, uh, it, it is, it's kind of been the, the standard method of encouraging turnover in your short-term parking for the better part of, you know, eight decades. Um, I mean, it, it, it really is the, the proven way to do it. Um, it's, um, uh, we can certainly, you know, look into that. I mean, there's, there's a, you know, upfront expense 
but you know we just did that along uh, uh, West Boston Post Road uh, on the uh, park side. Um, you know we can certainly you know look into uh, you know put together a, if that's a, a kind of the desired outcome is to you know really make sure we have the turnover to support retail businesses because that that's what that's what the parking meter does. Yeah. Uh, it's I mean, we can we can you know. Uh, maybe if they can get a formal request from uh, Mr. Marconi, you said. Mm -hmm. uh, if he can you know, put that request in, in writing to uh, uh, the village, uh, we can look at possibly including something in our capital budget. Because, um, you know, we do have a um, uh, we do have a parking fund that has, uh, uh, I believe, enough funds for us to purchase some more uh, uh, multi-space parking meters. He specific, specifically speak on Merrick Avenue, but the budget. How about how about the enforcement? How do we can we tally how many? How well, many what, what's nice about oh. gone there and issue tickets? Are they doing that? If not, what is the value of them not enforcing parking at this? So point? the the, the, the multi-space meter also makes it easier for them to enforce uh, because the meter itself communicates with the handheld ticket writers. That the PEOs have, so it, instead of having them to chalk tires either physically or through some other technological mean, they don't uh, chalk anymore. I, I well, there's there's, there's physical chalking, and then there's other ways of marking the the vehicles. But the the actual uh, multi-space meters communicate with the handhelds, so it will give them a report of. I think really, what my question was. Before we get to that spot and see how the merchants feel, what are we doing to support their enforcement? And can we get the numbers for the enforcement that's currently happened to date to support the fact that they are being supported? Oh yeah, I, I, I can ask our parking citation management company to uh, print a report or produce a report of uh, you know uh, overtime parking issued on a section of Mamaroneck Avenue. I, you know, we've asked we've asked for similar things like this in 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 the past, and I mean it would really help us make decisions because we we want to we want to make informed suggestions. We don't want to just like shoot from the hip, um, and we really want to know kind of what what the scope of the of the situation is. And um, I, well, at this point, I think that there's we got to do something over there. We we are are continuing to improve Maranek Avenue. Uh, from safe streets to schools to um, you know the whole re-engineering of that that space, it remains a highly visible spot. We we lost you know we lost a member of our community there uh, mm -hmm. not long ago. I mean this is a really the spotlight is really on this area, right? And it's an area where businesses are are really trying to survive. And if we're not going to do what it takes to help them out, then I don't think we're really doing our job. Our kids all walk that way. We all walk that way. People can't park there. It's a, it's, it's a, a complex issue, but if we can come up with some things that can make things better, like parking meters, I, I, I would say we do something like that. Yeah, and, and from an enforcement perspective, the parking meter is easier to enforce because it's kind of a black and white issue. It's, it's either expired or it's, it's good. Uh, if someone, if the maximum parking time is 90 minutes, that means you have to, you know, mark it at 10 o'clock and then come back sometime after 1130. Right. But that is very specific. And so take, it's, it's, it, it, you, the process of having to issue a ticket for that would take much longer than just saying it's expired or it's not expired. Are you sure that some kinds of people who are parking there all day are not people who actually work or own the um, those businesses? I can answer that. Uh, also, I also spoke to somebody from that store, and they said most of the people who park there, they're just gone. They're, they're not, some of them may, may be people who own stores there. In fact, in fact, in fact some, of, some of the people who do park there are uh, work there, mm -hmm. and they just don't care. So I think for the most part, it's people who park there and then go away mm -hmm. maybe they're going to the city who knows where they're going but that's that's what i was told people it's, park there and they leave. absolutely it's the behavior 
it, it and it's the lack of enforcement. And that's so yeah, that's cut and dry. Okay. I, I, I'd like to see the, the numbers, what they bear up for, I, I'd say there's a lack of enforcement. Well, I we just pulled back two spots, one in front of what was Peter and Sons, and, and one spot in front of Tri City. And I could go, I could drive by there at any given point during the day. And there is a car parked in a no parking clear as day. And morning, noon, and night, overnight, anytime since our last and can, can, well, I, I want to follow up on what Laura just said. You, you know those those spots on uh, on um, Madison mm -hmm. by the corner. I, I've been there, and cars parked there, which is no stopping. Cars parked there, and right. so there's there's no there's very very little enforcement of the the regulations and restrictions that we're trying to impose. That's a big issue. All right. So, um, and what's the what can we get a final recommendation? Uh, Dan, is that you looking at? Well, I, I was going to ask if um, Mr. Marconi, if if you're already in contact with him, to make a formal recommendation, or you know, a, a recommendation to the village, uh, asking for you know, looking for some methods to encourage turnover in the uh, the short-term parking spaces, because I think. That's the ultimate goal he wants. I believe he wants to see achieved. Well, but email is that recommendation well, seeking it. help. So I, I, I haven't seen it, Laura. Okay, so it is it sent to the traffic commission. It's sent to all of us. Okay, okay. and then they send it. They send it to us. I mean, send it to me, and I'll bring it to the, the board. But I, I think the my experience says the best way to incur yeah. the turnover. Let's get that to the It seems like yeah, you know it's not just on a soft copy of it. what you're saying is or what is what I am inferring mm -hmm. is that Mr. Marconi believes that vehicles are parked there for more than 90 minutes. They're parked there for extended amounts of time during the day. Is that accurate? Day and night. That's why okay. so then it's an issue of turnover, an issue of, of people not not treating not having any value for our parking spaces. Absolutely, right. but they're not being ticketed either. So I, there's no value and no repercussion. I, I understand, but again, you know, my perspective, I, I believe the the best way to encourage the turnover, because I believe that's what the, the 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 end goal should be, is to encourage the turnover to support the short-term businesses. Uh, the, the uh, I'm sorry, not the short-term business. Uh, the businesses that that require turnover in their customer base to be successful. Uh, you know, the when, like I said, when you have, uh, when you're not placing value on your parking, what Correct. you're going to wind up encouraging is businesses that don't need high turnover to be successful, and that means real estate offices, um, banks, you know, some personal services, but you know, when you have businesses that need the turnover, the everything Absolutely. can be geared towards encouraging. The turnover. So what he's asking for in this email is if we can't find long-term resolution, the short-term goal is for that area of 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 the Marinick Avenue to be enforced and policed exactly in the same fashion that yeah, yeah. can you can you have 85 cops be there 24 hours a day or not? Let's stay positive. They're yeah. asking. They're he's asking for an extension yeah. okay. of so, enforcement. So, again, I, I, I think the, the the 30 minute time limit is uh, that's that's Dan. It, it would create Dan, expectations that we can't Dan, meet. Dan, Dan, yeah. hi. Um, I think what we can do is uh, we can bring this back to the board, but I, I do understand um, what the committee is saying in terms of enforcement, because it's something that um, even uh, Lou mentioned last night, and, and it wasn't in particularly about the traffic committee, but just enforcement in general. Like there's things that just are not enforced when it comes down to ticketing in our community. And because these behaviors continue to happen because there is lack of enforcement, we have these behaviors so we can't we can sometimes we cannot say that it's not enforcement but we can look into it yeah I, and and that's what i i can do is i can actually uh ask our parking citation management company to provide a report 
of the number of parking tickets issued uh, for various violations um, of Aronic Avenue between, uh, I would guess would be the um, the 500 block and the 900 block. Cool. All right. They, they can probably get that information pretty quickly. Thank right. you. Now, I think that'll be a, that'll be the next uh, first step, getting some evidence, and then uh, Lilani um, uh, and you putting this forward to the trustees. Um, I think it's a, all these things. I think it's enforcement. I think the meters are, are a, a, a longer term solution. But yeah, we got We got to do something. All right. I, I, wanna, I, I do have one thing to say. I think in a prior meeting it was discussed about hiring a private contracting agent to do parking enforcement. Don't they have that in one of the towns around here? I, I've never seen a private agency enforce public parking. I don't think you can do that. I think you have to. Uh, I think you actually have to have a some sort of uh, uh, publicly um, uh, some sort of governmental role to enforce public parking. Um, I've seen private agency manage lots. I've seen private agencies issue violations for their own lots, but I've never seen uh, a private agency um, uh, enforce a, a, a lot. Or enforce, enforce I, I, public I, I don't want to get bogged down in that. I, I don't understand that. I honestly don't understand that statement, Dan, at all, because I, I, I see uh, private agencies enforce parking yeah. all over the place. So let's just move on from that. I, 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 I think that's, that's a good long term solution. Um, that's, that's it, it is, but it doesn't that's make sense. Yeah. And also, all this gentleman is doing in his letter, November 2nd, is asking for the enforcement of current parking regulations. Right. right. Enforcement of current parking regulations. Right. Not asking for something fancy, not asking well, it's, for it, it nothing is. punitive. Just it, enforce the current parking regulations. And, and I just want to I want to acknowledge the the heart, all the efforts that uh, our, our parking enforcement or law enforcement is doing. Yeah. And and it's mm -hmm. it's just um, you know we need to be support. mindful of everything that they are doing yes. and the level of support. But in order to get support, we also need to have a level of transparency to see the real scope of the problem. Yeah. And if there is community support, then that's how you mobilize community support when when we raise our hand and say, hey, look, we need help on this particular thing. So Lieutenant Gotti, you have our full support. Um, and, and, you know, if you can also let us know where maybe some possible gaps are. So folks like Lilani and, and, uh, Lou, um, can, can, uh, make things happen. So I, I do want to move on though, because I want to be mindful of, of time. Um, 805, 807, the Merrimack Avenue, uh, stop sign request. Any, anyone know? I can, I can speak to that. If okay. I can. So uh, this, this is Bricksmore. This is where North Shore Farms, CVS, and Chipotle is. Yes. There are two exits. There's one on the left where there's a light. It's an entrance and exit. And there's another exit next to Chipotle. So specifically, th this person is talking about the exit by Chipotle. Um, this is a, an accident waiting to happen. Um, I I've experienced exiting there and and having a kid on a bike swooping down my man down on Merrick Avenue, I, I didn't have a chance. I mean, fortunately, I saw him ahead of time, but I, I, I could kill him in a, in a, in a second if, if yeah. I wasn't careful. And there's landscaping on the left when you're. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you can't make the left. No, but, but you can't see, you can't you see, can't see pedestrians. But now this is private property. So, this is, so Dan raised the point that because this is uh, Bricksmore, the village, uh, you, and Dan, you can fill this in, that the village has no authority, that Dan was trying to reach a uh, someone associated with Bricksmore because it's up to them to make the change. Have you been able to make a contact with somebody at Bricksmore to deal with this? I, I, I will follow up when I, when I get back. Um, I think the other thing we looked at is I, I think there was uh, a contention that there may have been a stop sign at this uh, this intersect at this exit from the parking lot in the past. And I think we looked at the street view and we couldn't see, uh, you know, anything back to I think it was maybe two thousand feet on the on the road. Says stop. I, There's I no there was, stop sign. I thought there was all. Oh, there's because I parked here a lot. Um, 
I thought there was a stop sign there. But it's still hazardous. People, people think yeah, they can just exit. You're saying that there's not a stop sign on, on the, on the, the exit of, of, of no. North Shore. It just says exit. It says exit, there's but there's not, not a stop sign. That's so that's that should that should uh Dan, I, I think that that seems like a pretty reasonable reasonable. Yeah, yeah no, I, I I I agree it's reasonable. I, I just what I I think the point that uh I made and that Robert reiterates that it's private property. Right. So we, we don't um uh, the only thing I believe we can enforce on private property are fire lanes and handicap parking. We can't. Yeah, I think that's right. You know, using, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's, it is, it is private property, but uh, used uh, by our community and in the name of, of safety and bringing, if somebody in your role bringing yeah. that forward, I think is quite persuasive. Well, I mean, it, it, it did go through. Um, a site plan process when uh, uh, at the planning board level. Uh, usually the site plan involves an internal right. traffic circulation plan and a signage plan. Um, my guess is it was not included at that time. I'll, I'll take a quick look just to make sure. I wish, wish, you know, when I hear stuff like that, that's just beyond me. I, I do not know how we could, we could sign off on a, on a place that has sidewalks that is going out to four lanes of traffic adjacent to an elementary school, and it doesn't cross anybody's mind to have a stop sign at the exit. That's unbelievable. Tina? So uh, I, I have, I can, stop, so I, have I think control. I had brought this up, and also when Ann Good came on behalf of mm -hmm. Ameritic Avenue School, if there was a way to add some signage on the sidewalk for pedestrians, sort of like a to warn beware, traffic. there's cars a lot of tra high traffic area of cars coming in and out because i know a lot of times i'm coming out the pedestrians either don't care or don't look to see if a car is coming even so if there is some sort of signage that can be put at both exits and entrance i think it would be helpful to the pedestrians too okay did, did you be, i know you said you've probably never seen anything like that but i feel like so let's create it I, I walk by there all the time, walking north on Mamaroneck Avenue on the east side of the street. Cars coming down Mamaroneck Avenue, turning left into the parking yeah. lot, never see it. Mm -hmm. They have a they have a pillar, a post in their car. They're making a left yeah. turn, and you're behind the pillar yeah. the whole time. Mm -hmm. So, no, we haven't gotten hit there, but. You know, no, it's, a, it's not, a, you know, and, and they're, they're nice sidewalks. So pedestrians right. are thinking that these are nice sidewalks and that people are paying attention, drivers are paying attention. And, and it's it. just, it's not happening. So I think it's making drivers, uh, I mean, for me, that's that's where you ask somebody to put like a speed bump, you know, on, on the exit, like that, where like everybody breaks because <laughs> you have a speed, not a hump, a bump, mm -hmm. like the real one. Speed they, yeah. yeah, that really stops you. And you're like, oh, you go over it really slowly. All right, uh, I, I can talk to our engineer and see if there's a uh, a sign that's uh, in the manual. And, and, and who's the best person? Is that uh, who can actually follow up from the? Is that you, Dan, that could reach out to um, the the owners of that uh, the management uh, of that property? Bricksmore. Uh, Bricksmore yeah. to make a suggestion. Yeah, I, I should I should have a contact or two. If that's not, I can I can coordinate with building department because they probably have a they right. may have a more recent contact than. Uh, mine from four or five years ago. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to Union Ave uh, traffic control. So we received an email that uh, Ms. Langus, who brought this up, requested that we put this over till next month. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I like responded to, to her. That's um, speeding and statutes asking for stop signs and crosswalks. Where is that okay. in this paperwork? Um, so it's probably just number four. Look, the, there's an email. The the no, 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 I'm talking about this. But her actual email oh, is in that packet. I, number four. Okay. Right in front of you, right here. This one. Yep, this one. Yep, this one. Okay. okay. Number four is the label. All right. It's on page 19. Okay, here on page 19. Okay, so, can I comment on that? Yes, go ahead. Rob. Okay, so I was there a couple of times this week. I just parked. It's Union is a long street. The road is terrible. It's in terrible shape, and it needs to be repaved. 
And so as I was parking in the middle of the street, I would see cars. I didn't see cars speeding because what I noticed is that cars driving along that street, they, they were shaking because the, the road is so neat in need of repair that I, I wouldn't drive fast along there. But um, so that's one issue. And she's also asking for uh, stop signs along uh, Union at Hinman and on Ward and asking for crosswalks and also asking for a four-way stop on Union and Tompkins. Tompkins is where we had this issue with the Mimernic uh, Nursery School, if you recall. A block down from the nursery school. Yeah. And the closure of the bridge has changed dramatically. Well, that's helped. Yeah, true. Let me take this strip as in the center. Is that going to be open? Want to get your orange in three to four years? I don't know who told me that. It's going to be a couple of years before. Sorry, I have traffic returns to old uh, patterns in that area. Um, you know, Tompkins is closed, and then um, Ward Avenue is going to be uh, closed at some point while the Army Corps does the work on that bridge. Uh, and you know, Robert, it's like you know, you mentioned the, the condition of the roadway. It's actually it's this, that's kind of a double edged sword because, uh, you know, it's the actual condition is what keeps the car slow. It's that they don't, they perceive it not to be safe, safe, so they will slow down. Um, so are you saying that's a good thing? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it was um, uh, many, many years ago. If you're familiar with um, uh, Griffin Avenue up in the town, one one side is in the town of Mamaroneck, the other side is in Scarsdale. Medical. And we used to get, um, uh, petitions all the time from the residents up there saying, you know, we need this road paved. And there was one resident on the, on, who was on the Scarsdale side says, don't pave this road because it's going to cause cars to go fast down here. Sure. So, so what are, so we're going to propose, we're postponing, we're moving Union Avenue to the January 10 meeting. Um, I, I told um, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, individual, Ms. Langus. Uh, Langus, Mrs. Langus, uh, that I would uh, let her know when um, when that would be. She sent me a, a message um, about it yesterday, asking for it to be postponed. So, is that fine with everyone? Yes. Sure. Okay. Super. Um, so, our our one of our recurring themes, our recurring themes, Rockland Avenue. Is that so five five two eight Rockland. Everybody knows did, this well. Did you know that there are no parking signs there now? As of last week, right? Yes. Wow. Dan, <laughs> Dan, did you know that there's no parking signs? Yes, there? I received a call from the person who whose property Rockland Avenue runs through about that. Is that Matt Matt Sullivan? No, no, no. Um I believe it's 506 to 508 Rockland Avenue. I've mentioned before that a piece of Rockland Avenue runs through someone's property. And he actually owns on the other side of Rockland Avenue is still his property. And uh, those no parking signs are on his property. Okay. Well, I have to say for the one week that no cars parked there, it was so nice to drive on. But now, I guess, since no tickets were given, the cars are all parking there. Um, and I know that the question came up about the um, uh, the sidewalks and uh, what I am looking to do. And uh, I've spoken with our village engineer. Uh, we're going to ask our traffic engineer uh, from AKRF to give us a proposal. Um, and I. Um, Actually, I, I, Tina, will you copy it on the email? Yes, and I'll thank you. Up, I don't. You were going to give an update to the traffic commission. I think you and I spoke, but I don't know if everybody. Yeah. Knows. No, but um, so uh, a resident emailed the former uh, 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 chairman of the uh, Safe Boost of School. Did, did I copy? And she forwarded it to me. I responded. I don't know if I copied you. No, but I'm talking about that you wanted to do the walking assessment for that area. Oh yeah. So. Um, what I, uh, after I spoke with uh, Matt Carmody, who's our traffic engineer, and uh, uh, he suggested kind of 
doing that uh, walking safety assessment for that area. Um, and I had brought that up with uh, Brian uh, when he was still on the commission and the chair. I think he was uh, interested in pursuing that with our traffic engineer to kind of look at the area. And I had suggested uh, in addition to Rockwind that uh, would also be included are the uh, couple of side streets that connect to Rockland uh, between the uh, village and the town border, which would include Hickory Grove, uh, 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 Harmon. Harmon, Harmon, and uh, and Waverly. And I also uh, asked if you can extend it down to Carpenter Place behind Mamaroneck High School, okay. those couple of streets. Yeah. Um, but as, as an aside, um, uh, our engineer had been talking with AKRF because, you know, the question had come about sidewalks for uh, Rockland Avenue. Um, and uh, both sides of the roadway uh, have some challenges that would we would need to overcome. Um, on the uh, west side, which is the side heading towards uh, Palmer Avenue heading towards the railroad bridge. Um, uh, what I've mentioned to you is there's that, um, what I call the former dead end of Rockland. Um, uh, we would need to maintain access for those couple of homes down there. And in order to uh, build a sidewalk on that side, uh, we would need to also have a retaining wall, um, which is, you know, this is not cheap. Uh, on the east side, um, which is uh, 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 the uh, the side of, uh, uh, the side that you're on, uh, Robert, the Palmer Terrace side. Um, I, I believe we're going to have uh, rock issues, uh, tree issues, and the aforementioned easement issues. Uh, we are going to ask uh, AKRF to give us a proposal to do the conceptual and detailed design uh, for a sidewalk out there. Um, but my my guess is just knowing some of the issues we face out there, um, it could be a, a project somewhere in the range of maybe one seventy five to two hundred fifty thousand dollars, because there there are a lot of little issues that we need to uh, account for over there. But uh, it is gonna we are asking for a proposal on it. Uh, we are gonna put it in our capital plan, and uh, like I mentioned. Uh, Matt uh, suggest Matt Carmody suggested uh, that walking safety assessment. So are those no parking signs staying or not staying? Because it's also I mean, it, it is in the code. Well, so, but it's no parking. But then I I thought it was good too that as you're closer to that driveway that you're talking about that you that need the access to, the sign I believe says no parking during school hours. That way yeah. you can walk. Yeah, that that's that's the restriction. I did look it up in the code. It is a it is a restriction limited to school days and school hours. Yeah, no, I thought it was great, but Lieutenant Gatta, can we give some tickets to the cars yeah. that are parking there? It's that's a that's a danger. Because it's, over there. it was really, really great when there was no car. There actually was one minivan that kept parking there. And I guess when everybody saw that it didn't get a ticket for a week, now everybody's parking there again. This is just this past week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I mean, we really need some help. I, I, I walked there uh, three, four times over the last few weeks uh, uh, in the mornings, and I did it uh, twice with my, my son, um, who's eight years old, and some other kids were walking towards school, and I was walking um, the, other, the other direction. I, I mean, it, it is just out. It is, it is dicey. Yeah. And, and Adult, but if you're a kid, forget it. But I the mean, volume of kids that are walking is the other problem. There's a lot. A lot. I a mean, lot. you're talking probably yeah. over a hundred. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, th I think you're you're correct. It's it's not the not the greatest situation, um, but like I said, I think it's 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 the answer is more com is more complicated. Than just you know, slapping down a sidewalk. There's some major design considerations. We no, have. if those signs are staying, I think that it's a temporary solution as long as it can get enforced that cars don't park there. Yeah, complex complex solutions re re require you know, uh, or complex problems require multiple right. solutions, right? It's not just a magic bullet here. Yeah. 
We need to come up with mm -hmm. parking enforcement needs to happen right there. If those parking signs are up, we really need to change behavior over there. I understand that this is going through somebody's uh, property, but if you have a hundred children crossing your property every day, I mean, wouldn't you want to come up with some type of public solution and not simply uh, make the case that it's an easement issue? I mean, at what point is 100 kids crossing in front of your pro property five days a week more important or at least it needs to be juxtaposed to a property issue? Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point that, that has to be discussed. And I well, feel like and that's, so, that's one of the questions. Started because it's an easement issue. Yeah. So let's have the discussion. And I think having the engineers look at it and doing the walking assessment is a really important next step, Dan. Yeah, and 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 that's we had discussed that with Brian, uh, and I think he was uh, in you know wanted to uh, you know make sure that happened. So I mean, if that's something that the commission wants to uh, uh, have me uh, coordinate something with Matt, let's let's, yeah. let's do it. I'll, I'll, I'll personally personally get involved with that. Uh, okay, with Dan. But what's the status of talking to the neighbor? Do you feel, Dan, that he will back off or he's going to say, don't put that sign there? Well, the, the, the neighbor already called me complaining about the sign. Okay, it was, no, it was, no, that, that, that's, just, that's just one portion of the roadway. I mean, the, the, the signs were uh, along the entire section between uh, Harmon and the bridge. Right. Yeah, so it wasn't just, uh, it, it was more than just the, and that part is definitely on a public road. That's, that's not an issue. It's just, it's just that one little section that it's it's a it's something we have to account for, and that's on the opposite side of where the house is, correct? Uh, correct, but it's still I mean yes, it, that's correct, but it's it's still the it's still their property. I understand that. <laughs> well, it's yeah. Yeah. We deal with that. We can't. Right, we can't I know, but that's 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 just that's just a statement policy. of fact. It's not yeah. a uh, it's not a. a, a well, I mean. We, we have, that's a factual statement, and we, we need to um, engage in that conversation with that particular fact. I, I think yeah. that there's a lot of things that we can do um, with, with that. Yeah, no, and, and like I said, I, I, that's part of the proposal that we're going to look at and we're asking for is to, you know, make sure that we address all of these issues. Okay. Um, what so. is the process and how do, how do, how do our, how does, how are we, how are issues like this when signs are placed? How are the police notified that this has occurred? So they're able to do their due diligence. With, they can't do, they can't enforce unless they're given some sort of formal notification that these signs have been placed. What, how does that happen and who is responsible? Good question. Um, so I don't know if you want to say that, uh, Lieutenant, or you want me to address that? Uh, I, I think the, the simplest part is usually when a resolution is passed by the board, it's it's sent to us, and then we review it and, and put it out to the officers. If there's yeah. an update to uh, section three twenty six. Yeah, and, and I assume if the officers are driving around, and they see something that shouldn't be there, they use their discretion and issue a ticket if they need to. Correct. So I had I had had a conversation with the chief um, about something else, and that was a question that I asked her, and yes, she gave me the same answer that you just gave, Lieutenant Gatta. Um, but she did ask if there were things like this that were not passed by resolution, that maybe it would be helpful if the chair of the traffic commission could send her an email or something to that effect. If, if it was not passed? Or if it was not passed through a resolution, she's not getting a notification. What, what so how, so like these signs oh. that were passed, put up were not given a resolution, so I don't think she was aware because I actually but made how, my husband aware and he told the department that the signs were up. I don't think the it, department was notified. So uh, just what, one thing, Tina, the um, the restriction has been in the code. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it, we, we don't, uh, I guess there's, that's, that's two issues. One is when something gets adopted and then second, if a sign is, uh, you know, put up. So, um, not a timeline. So that's not necessarily a um, a traffic commission issue. If a sign is put up, and, and you know that's one of the things that um, you know we kind of need to do every couple of years is a field inventory of you know signs that should be out there but aren't. And if we come across something 
in that case? Yes, that, there needs to be a better system because also when the traffic commission approved and the signs were changed on Carpenter Place behind the Maranick High School, adjusting the no parking time right. from seven starting at 7.30, again, the Which police department was not notified until my husband told them because he was dropping the kids off at school and saw that there was cars parked there. So parking enforcement was not made aware that it was a problem and that the time was changed. So there right. has to be a better system. So so well, basically well, resurrecting a sign that's already in that's already has code or already has previously been passed to the board, right. somebody or I don't know whose responsibility it is, it is, it, I would I would say it would be staffing needs to send a memo to the police department saying we've now re-implemented signs that haven't been in place for several years. Right. Please be aware. So as far as the uh, the stuff that gets adopted. Uh, as Lieutenant Gatta mentioned, you know, they get copies of the resolutions. Uh, every After every board meeting, the next day I will send out an email to the department heads, uh, including, which includes a new DPW, police chief, all the others, saying, uh, this is what happened at the meeting last night. This is what was approved. And you know, here's who has to follow up and get things done. Uh, and then, uh, as Lieutenant mentioned, uh, the deputy village clerk uh, at the day after every meeting will send a certified copy of each resolution to the department head so they can review uh, what's been going on. So uh, they will get notice from me and they will all get notice from the clerk's office the day after each meeting of what was approved and the resolution with these specifics. So uh, if uh, is there ever a time when new signs are created without board of trustees approval? Well, changing of the um, was one of them because it was already an existing sign and it was just modified. So there was no resolution and that's why the police firm didn't know. That, that uh, two things, there's so, police, P, PD is known as notified through resolution through what you just outlined, Dan, right? That yeah. Somebody gives a summary of what happened at the trust the, 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 the trustees meeting and this is what you guys need to take action on, you know, as FYI, right? But then there's other things that occur that do not go through that process that need a different notification uh, to directly to the chief, right? Is that what everyone's saying? Well, any, anything that so anything that can be enforced has to it has to be approved by resolution of the village board. So the only signs that would be uh, uh, fabricated and installed would be advisory uh, without going through a formal board process. Now, uh, as I mentioned that occasionally uh, we will uh, you know, determine or find out that there are promulgations that have been uh, approved or sorry, restrictions that have been promulgated that for one reason or another, the sign isn't out there, whether it be um, it was never, a work order was never created or what happens more than times than not is some enterprising young uh, residents uh, will take the sign because they like signs uh, and then we'll replace the sign as necessary. All right. But we usually don't, I mean, if, if the sign is just being uh, replaced, that's already in the code. Yeah. I don't know that they're necessarily informing the police department each time. I guess I would, what, I, what I would like, what I would like to uh, uh, challenge um, you, Lilani, and me to come up with is a flowchart of sorts about who gets notified when and on what. Because I think I'm I'm not totally clear, and I think I thought I heard something different once before, and I just want to make sure that like, you know, we, people are giving a lot of time to this and putting a lot of thought and if we're if we are making a decision to make people better off i'd like for us to follow up with it and make sure that things are being enforced and people are being notified and the right people are being notified because then it just feels like an exercise in futility if we're all talking about it and it doesn't go the right direction so maybe after vacation a much deserved one by the way <laughs> uh we can all regroup and we can just use lilani you would benefit from knowing the process clearly right mm -hmm. i imagine Right. I would benefit from knowing the process. And then we all know the process. 
And then next time somebody becomes a uh, chairperson of this uh, standing committee, <laughs> your process. All right. Um, thanks, Dan, on that. Um, so la last one in new business, Meadow Street Speed Humps. There's nobody on to talk about it. Uh, I'm talking about Ankle and a teacher, everything. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So somebody requested uh, speed bumps. The mayor weighed in and requested uh, that uh, we consider putting speed humps. Um, what's interesting is that the village did install two speed humps on Grand Street um, some months ago, and we were requested to follow up on on that. It's Grand Street. Um, uh, Madison and Plaza, and Plaza. right? It's towards towards right. the end. Actually, of, those those speed humps. You think they're working out or not? Those they're great. They're working out there, but they need to be higher and wider. So that would be they're going forward. Flat. But those speed bumps were actually they're Washington speed humps, Street. Speed humps. They it's were right. actually Washington Streets. They were supposed to go there as a pilot program, but because Washington Street was being worked on, is and it's going to continue. They're tearing apart Washingtonville because we have no drainage, so they're going to institute drainage going forward. So for the time being, they move those speed humps to Grand Street to slow that through traffic down, <coughs> and then when the streets are completed, they'll they're going to put them through the rest of the road. Right, so so I, I see some issues here. So one. We've been asked to follow up on the efficiency and the value of those speed humps on Grand. Hmm. We have to figure out how to do that. Do we do we contact and, and survey the residents to see if they're happy with the speed bumps? Is, is it has it been slowing traffic? You know, we have to figure out a way what, to do that. How do we assess it? Also about the, volume of traffic. Well, I, I think we uh, um, sign monitoring how fast cars were going because there was the speed sign there. Yeah, and I think that's what that we were going to do is we're going to use the. Uh, kind of pre and post uh, uh, speed sign data, but I, I, I can confirm that with the uh, the police chief because I think we we did discuss how we were how we were going to monitor the effectiveness when we uh, em embarked upon this project several months ago. Right. So, but before we can consider adding speed humps to other streets like Meadow, we need to do the follow up on what's happening on Grant to see whether it's effective. I right. There needs to be change in size. When were they brought up? In September. I think we wanted like at least three to six months of of, of the the things being out there. Um, but I can let, let me uh, I'll, I'll remember to follow up with the uh, police chief and uh, our, our our group of people. Okay. Yes, Rob. So. On Meadow Street, this brings up another issue that I, I'd like some clarification about. So in October, the village manager referred this issue about the speed humps to Matt Carmody, a traffic consultant. And uh, I have a note here, we need to hear recommendations from Matt Carmody. Uh, so my question is, it was, I thought it was proposed that starting in December with committees in general, that experts were going to be assigned to the committees so that the members of the committees had someone to refer to, to get some guidance about what decisions should be made. And there was a discussion, I thought, about Mr. Carmody participating in our meetings. So I'd like to know whether that's going to happen and some comment on whether he's going to help us make decisions here. Okay, so um, as this is going to ultimately be a a, a, um, a budgetary issue, I think we have to discuss that with the board whether or not they would agree to that. Uh, I did bring up the concept with with Matt. Um, you know, uh, as most consultants, he he's eager to uh, do anything for the village that would help uh, the bottom line of AKRF. Uh, he did mention that uh, uh, there are other uh, uh, eng you know, engineers. Uh, you know, he's a—I think he's a senior engineer. Uh, he may, if it's a budgetary issue, uh, we could have another uh, engineer, a junior engineer, uh, who deals with traffic, uh, provide some support to the board. But I think, as far as uh, making that decision, that's—I think it's also when we have something, something we have to discuss with the board because of the budgetary impact. Right. But I, I did discuss it in passing. Yeah, I, 
Uh, yeah, go, go ahead, Rob. So this brings me to the question of the comp plan. Uh, just to summarize, Neil Desai is uh, doing the comp plan. In September, he came to our meeting and basically just said to her, he didn't give us a presentation. He said we needed to. So this is from the comp plan. This is a 20 page uh, section of the comp plan that deals with traffic and transportation. So we were asked to read this and then meet with him and provide some recommendations about what was included here. I read through this. I don't know if anybody else had a chance to read through this. Um, and I had a bunch of questions. And my questions are on the last page of the summary. You can see the last page 20 of your summary. You can see all the questions. There's no way in the world that I, or I think any of us, can make recommendations to the comp plan without some expert uh, assistance, either from Mr. Desai or from Mr. Carmody or somebody else. Um, so I don't see how we can make any recommendations or have a, a reasonable conversation about the comp plan without, number one, answers to the question, to the questions here, about the comp plan and participation from somebody who knows more about transportation and streets and all that kind of stuff that, that knows more than we do. Okay, so I mean, is the request to time period that we need to make recommendations for the comp plan? What's the time? Well, well, well let me, I, I hate doing this, but I'm going to answer the, a question with a question, uh, which is are, is, are you asking? for uh, me to have Matt maybe attend uh, uh, the next meeting of the commission or someone from ACARF to kind of like give a, a primer on, on some of this stuff or? Well, so so one of my thoughts on, on this was, um, you know, I agree that we don't have the expertise uh, to to weigh in all, all this stuff. And if this was done in a way that was more like, you know, participatory, you know, uh, we'll take something for participatory budgeting, right? Participatory planning, where it was actually a facilitated process where you had an expert saying, all right, you all live here. You all know things that happen in the traffic commission. What do you think about these intersections? And what are some ideas? And let's, let's, let's whiteboard some of this stuff out, right? That's kind of what I thought was going to happen. But, you know, we looked at a, at, at a, at a, 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 a planning document, that, and we're not we're not urban planners. I don't think any of us are. Maybe maybe I don't know. So so you know, I, and it was just a lot. Like I mean, it's cool to like weigh in on stuff and like give our give our perspective. But I, I think that you Thank you know you. that this com this commission uh, and certain members of the commission have expectations that we're going to bring our our best forward. Correct. And we want if we're going to be asked to do this, we're taking this seriously, and we want to make serious suggestions and i don't know if we really knew what the parameters were and really how to make those suggestions without a process that was facilitated by an expert and i'm not trying to cost us more money and say we have to have an expert come in here for five hours but maybe a discussion right well a simple thing is to have you know well, well, i'm gonna i'm gonna make a suggestion so we're recording this so if you know what might be helpful is if there's a kind of a I, I hate to suggest a freeform discussion, but uh, if I can ask Neil to take a look at this video and you know, kind of respond to some of the concerns you're raising or be prepared to respond to some of those. So maybe um, by getting some of these uh, issues out there, we can formulate a plan of how to respond to them uh, for, for the next meeting. I'd like to ask Daniel to come to, to see if to come in and sign in on Zoom to come to the next meeting. Okay. Did, I mean, I know Robert spent some time. I spent all the time. Yeah, and, and, and I apologize. I, I, I just a lot of questions. Lost, lost track of this and yeah. I, I, I neglected to invite him. And, I just, I just, yeah, that's okay. and he was able to circle back to the to Parks and Rec. And yeah. I, we do need that hands on time. I didn't mean right. to interject, but we need that. We need his participation to help yeah. get us to the next place for us to give all of our valued input. Because Well, that's what he was supposed to do, because that's what we did with Parks right. and Rec. He came right. and did that initial like he did here. And then he came back to it again yeah, and we back. had a right. conversation. Right. So we that's what that's what we, we want. And we have three, we have three new members. Uh, we have a we have a new trustee and two two new members. Uh, I think it would behoove all of us to uh, visit 
um, that 20 page document that Rob uh, went through and asked questions about. Um, there are some ideas that, that I had looking over it that I wanted to 20. share, but I just, we didn't really have a forum I mean, this, to do that. For yeah, I mean, I, I think part of the request was, what wasn't also to kind of um, Those are the questions amalgamate about. all your questions into one actual document for him to kind of look over? Yes, and about, didn't you email the questions to Stan that you had? It would be nice if. Uh, well, I, I think I, what I had just received I, questions I, from Robert, and I, I hadn't. I think I had asked if there were anything else from anyone else on the committee, and I hadn't heard anything. So I, I didn't. I wanted to kind of right. wait to see if there was some general Actually, consensus about some of the follow-up items. But everybody's in favor. I understand. But no, Rob, yeah, I this, this is is so if everybody's okay with Rob's questions or do want to add, then you know I yeah, think I that's what Dan is. Take a look at that well, that's yeah. what Dan is saying. Yeah. He's saying if you know if everybody's okay oh, no, no. with just dance, then then so be it. But if everybody has some input, then he can pass on the information to Mr. Neal. Yeah, Brian or Rob, can you provide that? Because not everybody has. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want the plan, not the questions. Yes, plan. Yes, can someone send me a PDF? Can we make copies of them? And Leilani and Richard. Can we have a couple more weeks to send more additional questions for the next time? Yeah, I was going to volunteer Augie to make copies. So, are your comments on the back important? No. Okay. Do you mind if I copy your comments? Yep. Do you mind if I copy this? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, um, and, and the fact that we have new members, I think it's 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 important that we get uh, uh, perspectives. Um, yeah. um, at the at the very least, I can also um, I know uh, we had Shannon talk with the commission. Uh, Shannon was a former uh, uh, chair of the traffic commission for the new members. Talk about some traffic safety concepts. Um, Matt has also done uh, training for traffic safety commissions in Westchester and Bronson County. Uh, I can also ask him for a proposal to come in and possibly talk to about uh, the concepts of, of traffic safety to the uh, commission again as well. Yeah, and I think that having an you know an off uh, an off cycle meeting where we're not where we're not discussing business. But maybe doing more board development uh, piece, like a one-hour session with an expert, and we do not discuss any um, business. business. Yeah. Um, can we do that and without violating uh, meetings laws? If it's like well, a, the board development, you can. I think it has to be noticed. But you know, if it's just a, but if it's just if if you're not doing any, if you're not discussing any sort of public business, it's, it's going to be a pretty straightforward meeting. Yeah, I mean, and a, be, a very beneficial for yeah, and all of I'm, us I'm, to I'm, learn. It might not be a meeting, it might be a training session. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, 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 would, it could, oh, yeah. I think it would still need to be noticed, but I, I think that um, if it's just, a, uh, you know, you're under, uh, you don't have to take comments from the public. Uh, you, if this is a right. meeting strictly for that purpose, you can have a training session. And um, honestly, I'm I'm not offended by people having training on traffic safety issues. Yeah, and I think if we can, and, and you know, we might not be able to get everybody here, but you know, if we if we just try to do like Tuesday evening and do it, whoever can come can come, and we can record it. That's fine. You know, we do it on Zoom. We don't have to worry about and the people who can't come can circle back to it. Yeah. Yeah, All we, right. we can. So, we can definitely. Like I said. Zoom is, it's, it's amazing how far we've come in the uh, last couple of years by uh, yeah, totally by circumstance. And participation. I mean, this is, you know, we want more people involved in, in you know, the democratic process and these, you know, these community processes. And Zoom is really the ticket to do that. Uh, well, not to advocate for one particular company, but the court system uses Microsoft Meetings. Yeah. So teams. That type yeah, of I mean, Teams, WebEx, Zoom. Yeah. Well, I mean, even even uh, right before right before the pandemic, you know, I had uh, uh, people in the mental health world telling me, "No, I'm very sorry, we we cannot we cannot do um, 
online uh, uh, meetings, it's a violation of HIPAA. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> that was, what? That was, and now we all have one of those. That, that, that was fast, right? Yeah. right. That federal law. Wow. This is quick. Yeah. So, um, so is, is there old business that we need to consider? I want to be mindful Just of everybody's one. time. There's, there's um, just one and one question. And it, it's one and one question. Yeah. Royal Place and Away Plains Road. Yeah. We had discussed. Yeah. Oh, what page is that on? Old Post Road. Old oh, Post Road. Sorry, see what's on my head. Old Post Road. It's so no 15. 15 oh, and 20 second down. Safe crossing for kids. Request for stop sign on Old Post Road. Old business. Old We're business. Trying to be as limited as possible. Old business. Business. Um, just uh, uh, I do have uh, one update on that, and I I, I did uh, follow up with co enforcement. I asked them to. Uh, inspect that one property which may have had a uh, visual obstruction to uh, uh, take a look at it. I can follow up to see if that happened. Um, secondly, um, you know we had discussed the uh, the old the issue with the old post road sidewalk. Um, we are going to uh, ask for a proposal on that because in addition to um, the sidewalk issue, we have some drainage issues out there. That we need to uh, address. So uh, it may, we're going to see if we can, uh, what the uh, the cost would look like if we can kill a couple of birds with one stone out there. Uh, but I will, I will follow up on the uh, the visual obstruction issue. Okay. And well, we can follow up when you return or the email. Yeah. yeah. But I know Tina did come and she did I find out how many students school. actually yeah. crossed there. So would that help you with data? Absolutely. 15 of 20. Which, what? Uh, Old Post Road. Royal Place, Old Post Road. Because I think we had talked about That's even possibly putting a crosswalk a so that the kids could safely cross to go what? to the sidewalk because it was on the other side. And um, the Mamaronic School District told me there are approximately 25 children on that street that walk that way. Okay. okay. Like a Thank significant you. number for one street. Question: Do we do crosswalks where there's no sidewalks? Do we do crosswalks where there are no sidewalks? Um, well, there's a sidewalk. Yeah, 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 there's a the side of the roadway. So that's the, the fairway green side. Um, we have painted a about a five foot uh -huh. area for uh, uh, for as a, a a walking area, and I mean I, I think you can put um, uh, a a crosswalk across there. Um, it, the only if you had a curb, you just have to make sure you have to have drop curb or a sidewalk. Sorry, you uh, said you can put yes. a I, I believe you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't. I mean. I, I think uh, you can put a crosswalk. Uh, I think uh, I think when we discussed, uh, remember when uh, uh, Brian Dempsey came to uh, 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 a traffic commission meeting to talk about uh, the high school and chopped. I think you said you can put a, I think you put a crosswalk anywhere you have like a a road or a driveway opening across a road. When we talked about this last time, you told us we couldn't put a crosswalk, so that's why I. Try to find yeah, out. I, I think you can. I'll, I'll follow up. I, if, if I if I said something to the contrary, I apologize. No, it's okay. No, yeah. but it, it's helpful to know that there's that many kids. Like I didn't expect it to be that big of a number yeah. just because from one street. Yeah. Is that 25 uh, children across? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dana, was that 25 the across Royal. all grades or just uh, you know the uh, middle school? No, you said there are 25 uh, children. Told you there are 25 children. That, that only go to Mamaronic School District. I don't know about the other schools. Like if they go okay, so but that means they're either going towards the high school, the middle school, uh, or uh, central. Well, they all have to go that way. Yeah. I think even the kids that walk to the high school go that way. Okay. And, I think they're, they're and, either going to Hamix, the high school, or central, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is that okay. same part where the foliage is supposed to be. Right, yeah, right, right. Okay. right. Yeah. So is it, um, yeah, we've been looking at that for a larger project. So does the commission have to do something to ask yep. for a crosswalk? 
Um, I, we can make a motion. And this is for Royal and, and Old Old oh, Boys. Yeah. Or I know that is because you have to cross the street just to get right. to the walking path. Right. I'm not going to visit that. Side, so. <coughs> I guess I have to visit it. Yeah. So do we need to make a motion for the crosswalk? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Really I would just you know, you know, in that case, I think it would just be a request to the uh, village manager because that doesn't require uh, a board approval. Do you need a stop right. sign because there's a crosswalk or no? No. You don't need that. Crosswalks don't need to be controlled by signage. Okay. I mean, people still have to yield to pedestrians on the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I, I have issues with uh, those mobile signs that uh, we put in there sometimes because I've seen those signs get hit a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, all right, we, we, we want to make a recommendation um, for the creation of a crosswalk to the city manager then. Do you do that, Dan, or do Sorry, we have to send an email? Uh, well, if you take a, a vote on it, I will let the manager know. Actually, you'll have, you have your minutes, so it's got to be reflected in your minutes. All, all in all in favor of of uh, a recommendation to the village manager to have a crosswalk at um, Royal Place. Royal Place Royal and, Boston and Boston Post Road. On, on Old Post Road. Oh, it's on, on Old Post, Post Road. Road. It's on uh, a crosswalk at Old Post Road. Road. On, and yes, it's uh, across Old Post Road. And Royal. Yes. At the corner of Royal. Well, hold on a second. A crosswalk across on, on Old, Old Post, Post Road at the corner, corner of Royal. Of Royal. Okay. You need to vote on it. It's just a recommendation. Right? Yeah. It's a recommendation. Okay. But we all agree that it's, we all agree. We all agree. Um, so there's a couple a couple of things that I want to be mindful of time. I'm 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 want to close this out in seven minutes. That's seven. my goal. Good job. Okay. I have one question. Okay. Go ahead. The last meeting that we were in, we voted and moved to put to the board of trustees the removal of a spot on Old White Plains Road at the corner of Madison. It has. Yeah gone to it has circled back twice it has not right. gone to resolution and it has not gone to the board it went to the board i, I believe it did they, they installed on grand they installed on grand and then it actually, and then they they i thought I, I think we did i thought we did both resolutions the same night we did but they didn't put the stop sign there they, so well, there wasn't a stop sign parking sign so where do you oh, look okay then if, if that's road mm -hmm. Cars are parked to the corner of Madison, mm -hmm. and that's what the existing issue was. When those cars are parked corner to corner, you have to pull out to come around into the small part of Grand, and you have cars double and triple parked. That's the whole reason for the removal of those spots. So we've had to circle back twice to, to just put a no parking from the corner, one no parking spot on Madison. On Old White Plains. Okay. It's already there on the Madison. Corner of Madison and so Old it meets the corner of Madison, Madison and it has not gone, it has not been installed. Okay. I, I recall sending the work order to Public Works, but I'll I can verify. Okay. Yeah, I I I I I think I, I think I sent both work orders at the same time. So um I, I'll check. Okay. Thank you very much. Um I, I just want to give you uh a couple of other updates. Um uh, so, you know, uh, for the track commission, I know one of the items we discussed was the crosswalk at Stanley and Mount Pleasant. Uh, that should be done in summer of 2023. Uh, I met with uh, Westchester County Planning because that's going to be done through CDBG funding. I've seen the 30% design plans and it's in there. So, great. Right. Uh, and actually, a resident from uh, the apartment uh, building over there called and then uh, our deputy clerk and I asked her to let her know that uh, it should be done in the summer. Um, also, uh, we applied for a grant from the United States Department of Transportation. Um, I think I may have shared with the commission the uh, report that I asked uh, our traffic engineer to prepare last year about uh, uh, both the resiliency of our signal system on Mamaroneck Avenue, as well as 
the signal timing. Uh, there were uh, several recommendations to implement technology as well as replace a couple of signals. Uh, and uh, the this report this grant opportunity came along. Uh, it allows for a first phase of a a a, a demonstration project uh, with a, a grant amount up to two million dollars and then ten million dollars for the for the next round. So we, we have proposed the implementation of a uh, demonstration project, which would be uh, upgrading the signals at Mount Pleasant, Mamaroneck Avenue, Halstead, Bishop, Hoyt, as well as the intersection realignment uh, over there. And uh, that has a, there was about a $1.8 million um, uh, application. Uh, I, it's a it's a it's a competition nationwide, but I believe the uh, the application was compelling. But you know we'll see what happens. But I know that's been a uh, uh, a uh, a sore point in this community for many years, the complexity of that intersection and uh, uh, safely crossing across all legs of it. Thanks, thanks, Dan for that, that update and for um, getting those resources to the community, that's it's, um, really important. Um, so uh, in, to, to help us get one piece of old business off our old business list, I guess I don't know if we're gonna be able to clear, there's a lot of things on here um, that are, are still pending as old business, but one in particular thing is, um, uh, Somebody needs to contact um, Justin uh, Gonlag for, from 412 North Ferry, who was requesting the installation of a safety mirror. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is not possible for us to weigh in on that. There's safety issues from, F, uh, from, from, from uh, the fire department. Um, and uh, so, I think uh, there just needs to be a notification. Is that is that something you want uh, that I would do? Right, I, I, if, uh, if you include it on on the list, I'll I'll prepare a draft letter um, for the uh, the chair's signature. Okay. And yeah. All right. I yeah. Sometimes it's I, I think the uh, uh, it's it's a pretty straightforward uh, response. Okay, so I said I was going to end um, at 9:20. We have one minute left. So um, at this point, I think we have some old old business uh, uh, that we that we didn't get through. That I'm going to recommend that we just move to to next time. That uh, we agree agree that we covered a lot of a lot of things for you. and we had introductions at the beginning. Um, all right. Any uh, any last words? I, I have a last word. Yeah, not the last word, but I have a word. Sure. I just want to clarify about the complaint. Sure. What our marching orders are. So our marching orders are for all of us to read this. And if we have any questions before you actually write any questions, just check. Look look at the questions that have already been prepared, so to, to that we don't duplicate anything. And if there's anything addition, add, add you know add it. The question is, who do we send it to? I think we should all get a copy of somebody, and, and I'm assuming that you go to Dan. Am I right? Or your and, chair. Well, when I say to all of us, it goes to the board. We're all going to, somebody has questions, we'll all get a copy of what that is. But it should also go to Dan, I guess, for him to forward to Mr. Desai. Is that, is that? Yeah, I, mean, I look at this as, as this goes to Dan to show that. And the time, and how soon, what, what's the time in it so that we get responses at our next meeting? Well, how yeah. quickly should we do that? I don't know if uh, I don't know if Mr. Desai is going to prepare answers to every one of our questions. I hope that it will um, invite a a conversation with okay. him that we can, you know, say these are these are some of the questions that we have that we've all read. He might not be able to address every single one, or might say this is not relevant any longer because this plan was prepared in 2019. I mean, we we already kind of got a sense of some of that stuff looking at it. And some of these go back. 10 or 12 yeah, it's just, they're the just dated, really they're right. like dated issues, but I don't know what's, I don't know what's dated and what's not. Um, so, so getting it all out there and then, uh, uh, 
putting it in front of Dan and in front of Mr. Desai and say the traffic commission wants to have a, a meeting about some of these things. And these are some of the things that we desire to discuss. That seems good. Um, just as, as, uh, as a follow-up, after uh, the commission met with Neil, um, I, had, I met with him, I think uh, just a couple of days after to update him on various items that were in the comp plan that have been completed. Uh, I, I can't remember the specifics of my discussion, but uh, uh, I'm sure that um, you're aware of some of the stuff that's in there that uh, we've already accomplished. And uh, I, that, uh, you know, he's been told what's, uh, what's been accomplished. I think we probably mentioned that uh, prospect Fenimore in there and I let him know that was done. Right. Yeah, All right. So, so uh, when, and the, de the deadline for this, uh, two, two weeks, is that good for everyone to get back? Two weeks. If you give me everything by the uh, uh, 27th or the 29th, I'll, I'll make sure sure Neil gets it. Well, it'll be the first thing on your desk when you return from vacation. I don't know if it's the first, but <laughs> okay. I, I think I think Augie's going to have stuff for me. <laughs> I'm sure you have nothing else to do. All right. Well, thank. Uh, oh, um, thanks everyone. Uh, is there a motion uh, to adjourn? adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. The favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Augie, thank you.